Hey, how's it going? Good morning, or mm. whenever you're listening to this. Happy New Week! Mm. It's a brand new podcast with your boys. It's the Mings mm. uh, at today, the table talk. Today, we're trying to imitate what you guys are feeling because we're in first thing Monday morning recording a podcast. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I, oh I don't know gosh. if it's the same thing because people go in way earlier than, than what we usually. Does that mean you want to come back and try and record a podcast at six in the morning? Oh, sorry, not very good for that. <laughs> Um, I think it's been a while since Minga and I just kind of sat down and freestyled it because mm. we've tried to always have a topic mm. for everything that we're talking about. Or at least a guest. Yeah. Most um, of the time. But I think today it's quite timely that we want to talk about something that's closer to our hearts because it's literally what we're doing right now. But before we jump into that, mm. um, recent updates in our lives. Okay. <laughs> What's been happening? Um, my baby just learned how to stick her tongue out yesterday night. So that's cool. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Not much. Um, <laughs> life's been pretty chill. Life's been... Oh my goodness. Where are we? We're in October. It is October. I lit- I Start of October last week. I thought it was start of September. If you're meme worthy, you would know. Michael Bublé is defrosting as we speak. He is. It, is. it is time for Mariah Carey and Michael Bublé to take over the airways very soon. Christmas is around the corner. But you really know what? Change oh. is the only constant in life. Wow, how do we get there? I'm not done talking <laughs> oh. about nothing. All right, all right. Um, well, what's up with you? <laughs> I'm quite sad that I'm out of coffee. So recently, oh. recently, um, so like if you guys don't know about us, <laughs> which you probably don't. But Minga and I <laughs> Minga and I are oh. avid coffee drinkers. Like we drink coffee a lot. Yeah. Um we try to like he 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 survives on it. At least three cups a day. People say 70% of your body is water. Minga is 90% coffee. No, no, my blood type is caffeine. It's different. Um I drink it because number one, I like the taste. It's and nice. number two, sometimes it makes me awake. So recently, Mingyu uh, got his hands on a really interesting stash yeah. of Japanese coffee. So I, I bought these uh, packets of <laughs> pet wow. beef. Pet beef. I don't like it when people speak and they need to clear their throat, but they don't clear their throat. Okay, we got it. But a- that's just something about me. <laughs> Back okay. to the coffee story. So um, I recently bought this. Um, I want to call them. S- they're not sachets. It's like they're self. Sachets. It's a self no, no, no. brewing kit. It's called a. It's a brewing pouch. Co- uh, drip coffee. It looks like a pouch. It is a pouch. So yeah. basically what it is, if you have a cup, so imagine with me in your car, however you're watching this, you have a <laughs> cup, you have a cup in front of you, right? And then you have this like, pa- like paper and it has legs and you stretch the legs and over the size of the cup. Legs. And then you, you pour water on top and then there's coffee grinds in it, right? And then right. the water drips out and then it's literally drip coffee and it's good. Okay. It, and, it is. And it is. And it's healthier. It is a lot healthier. And it's cheaper yeah. than buying Starbucks every single day. Yeah. I think at the rate that we're drinking coffee, we appreciate the nice tasting stuff. Because hey, especially with cheap. Maybe we should, we should do something about coffee one day. We should. Uh, we should we give, have like, a freaking award winning barista in our Oh our my studio. gosh, Matthew, where you at? And uh, this Joker has only made coffee like three times. Once. Three. Three lah. Okay, three. three. You know? um, but the, the, the point I wanted to get to about the coffee story is that I'm all out. That's why I'm drinking <laughs> that's water. That's if you're watching the visual podcast, <laughs> I'm drinking water. Yeah, I'm really I, sad about that. I, I, am, I am not too picky about it because I just need a spike of caffeine before the day proceeds. But uh, hey, you know what? Change is the only constant in life. You prepare that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, today we're talking about a pretty interesting thing that uh, technically we are kind of doing on the surface. Yep. Um, so quick, quick brief of the structure of what we're doing these days. Wow. What is work? Um, it's what <laughs> pays the bills. Okay, cool. Um, I mean like, uh, <laughs> all right. We've been making videos. Yeah. Uh, and basically that has somehow become uh, what a lot of people kind of known as by. If you have stumbled across this on Spotify and you've just like been tuning in, wow, props to you. Yeah. I, I respect and appreciate- How did you find us? Man? I'm so impressed. Uh, but yeah, it's been seven years since we started doing YouTube. Mm. Technically, by accident, it was not planned. Um, and today, work is pretty much making videos for brands. Mm. Uh, Mingyu does a lot of social media for brands, meaning you know, uh, you write up stuff, yeah, shoot pictures, yeah. What else do you do? 
Um, write up more stuff. We do, yeah. I mean, we do a lot of creative consultation as well. Yeah. So it's all in the bag. But the fun part that you guys usually watch is the YouTube parts or uh, when you randomly catch us in random brand ad videos that we're involved in, which is fun, which is fun. Um, but the thing is, I think like all Asian boys and girls, huh? <laughs> not that we are representing both. Yeah. We are we are trained to not complain. Yeah. You are you just supposed to do what you got to do. Unfortunately for our parents, Ming and I don't really do that. Uh I think I've dropped out of two degrees. Ming you dropped I've, out of yeah. two. I no. mean it's a bit harsh <laughs> to say you dropped out. La. It's, you didn't drop out. No, I dropped out of architecture, you man. Dropped I dropped, dropped out, it yes. like it's hot, man. <laughs> After that, two what that, one semester? One semester in, yeah. I was freaking losing hair. I was I was really good. I took two semesters and <laughs> I dropped out. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh just for context, we have a new intern today and she's yeah. just smiling because she's not even started her degree yet. And she has two shining she's examples. She's so young. She has two shining examples of uh, guys who dropped out of their degrees. I'm so, so sorry, Esther. Uh, <laughs> don't do this. Not shining models. Don't do this. You cost a lot. You cost your parents a lot of money. Fun fact: Esther's from Chiras. We literally <laughs> just found out, like maybe three minutes ago. Yeah, don't worry. We're not going to put your Google Maps. You can click on the description box to see yeah. where she stays. No, she doesn't. Uh, Back to the podcast. <laughs> so I think change in our society is something that I I would feel we didn't grow up uh, learning. You know, if you if you're good at something, you stick to it, or there's a discipline of uh, sticking to your guns, mm. or you're sticking to your strengths. Mm. However, I I do say this with the fact that these days, uh, millennials change jobs like underwear. Yeah. Um, so and I and partners I, I, like I'm even not, I'm worse. not gonna start the relationship, but yeah. but I think when it comes to something that if you found yourself in a comfortable situation of your strengths, change is difficult. Yeah. Because it it's like you know. It's like gambling. Um, oh, you're playing a hand, and then you keep losing, but then you go, you're sticking in there because you know maybe the next hand is gonna win. Um, we came to a point where we kind of figured out, like, okay, uh, I guess we are okay making videos. Uh, yeah. People started, well, asking us to make videos off of the channel, and I think from that point on, we managed to build like a team, a studio around it, and today it's pretty much, um, yeah, McDonald's. Videos, uh, Max's videos, random brand videos. Uh, then we kind of figured out that oh my gosh, okay now I I don't I don't know about we, but I figured out like oh my gosh, I'm I'm really bored of, of doing this. Yeah, and I could just continue making it, but I don't know. I've never been the type to want to force something to happen. So recently, if you're tuned in to if you're tuned in to our YouTube channel. Uh, we kind of announced that, hey, we be- What are you doing? I'm trying to off the sounds on my watch. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, if you're tuning to our YouTube channel, we announced that, I announced that, uh, you know what? I'm going to start making sketches. I'm going to start making skits and just make anything I want. I mean, to be fair, um, if, 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 you're, uh, if you're a subscriber of the main thing, which is our main oh. channel, yeah. Um, you would know that we're not exactly the most consistent uploaders. No, we're not. Um, are we only up for that? No, no, we're not. We're not only up for that. It is um, life. <laughs> but hey, you know that's life. Sometimes you don't get what you want, yeah. and you don't get to make what you want. Yeah. Um, and I think Ming talked about it for a while because you know we started off doing YouTube, doing a lot of comedy sketches. Like we love doing that kind of stuff. We were really consistent at one we point. We were so consistent every week. We had one new one. But I have to say also, because at that time, there was only four of us in the there team. There was only four of us. It was really easy to go and shoot stuff. That's right. We didn't need to worry about jobs because we just do one job and that would take care of us for like three months. Yeah. So we had three months to shoot whatever we want. Correct. Um, but uh, I don't know, man. Like These the, days the change not the same. part. Yeah. I feel like before we talk about what we're doing now, leading up to where we were or mm -hmm. are right now, there's been a lot of like, people have asked us like, how come you guys don't do comedy anymore? How come you guys are like not doing funny videos anymore? And to be honest, the real answer to that is because we're so burnt out. We're so <laughs> jaded. Uh, we need... We we've, we've okay. not wanted to do comedy. Yeah, why don't okay? Why don't you talk about one element of it? I'll talk yeah. about element. So I think personally, for me, it was yeah. because I'm just I don't feel funny anymore. Right. My my sense of humor has changed so much. I yeah. still want to do like 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 comedy sketches, right. but we've been so busy, and then 
for me, because like there's such a huge element of work that comes right. into it, that when we, you ask me to be funny for a video, it doesn't come out naturally. And, and I don't like it. I don't like not natural funny. I think we were just talking to Jen about this. Mm. Were, you, were, you, were you there as well? Yes, I was. Jen was like, she feels very fake mm. because she feels not funny as well. But yeah. man, she hit it way faster than we did because she works a lot. She's um, so, so hard working. Uh, what, would you, is this what they call jaded? I know I, I've grown up in high school, you know, all the girls are like, I'm so jaded with uh, yeah. life. I'm like, what, what does that actually mean? Does no, that I, mean? I, think, I, think, I think it is. I mean, for me, I, I know that, that if people want me, and oftentimes people do ask me to be, appear in videos to be funny and I, and I don't mind, mm. but like, oh, honest bomb's dropping right now, early in the morning. Go it's not it. that early. It's, it's, not, it's almost 12. Um, <laughs> honestly, I really don't enjoy it, especially mm. if it's not something that I wrote mm. uh, when it comes to like comedy or humor because I, uh, like among my group of friends and even in the people in the office, people realize that I don't laugh at jokes. I mm. usually make people laugh or I, I'm usually like what triggers a laugh. But if you look at me, I, my face doesn't change. I don't mm. laugh at <laughs> at the things that make people laugh. And so that's actually, it just makes me really like, mm, well, nothing's really funny. And, and the double eight shot is, I think at the peak of, I think at the first peak, I'm going to say first peak because I'm- First I'm, peak, yeah. I, I, I honestly I don't feel too young, that, man. Uh, we're, we're not even old yet. Like it's, it's we're oh, still pretty- like, I mean, like, compared to Esther. Compared to Esther, Esther's really young. We're literally I a decade apart. I think when we were really in the swing of doing comedy skits, a lot of brands reached out. And I think the double eight shot is that we had no control over what those scripts were. Yeah. And we, at well, it's still a job. It is. You gotta show up. You gotta you gotta read the script. You gotta make it funny. Yeah. And I, I think that is actually like one of the number one killers because like we not agree on like oh my gosh this script, who wrote this script? And then we'd ask and see like oh can we change it? Can we do this? Can we do that? And the simple answer is like sorry, our client approved this already. You gotta stick to it. And you know, kind of takes the feels a lot funny the, to be honest. The joy out of like okay. So you hired us for our comedy sense, but you're not going to use it at all. And you just imagine that and layer on maybe two to three years of that. Uh, voila, comedy. <laughs> yep. I mean, I, I mean, I think there is this thing, I'm going to just Google up real quick. Um, it was quite timely that even that time when we were talking to Jen about it, um, there's this thing called the imposter syndrome. I don't In know the, whether you what? guys- The imposter it's syndrome. It's called an imposter syndrome. Okay. Um, uh, it's a very interesting, how would I say, it's a very interesting state of mind where I would I would say anyone with a skill set un, uh, undergoes. Um, personally, I will admit, I've never felt this because I've never approached my work that way. Uh, but we've not just had to talk this about Jen, we've also had to talk with this about a chef, uh, with a chef, uh, Ahong. And Renee, oh yes, like he he's he's mentioned that he feels very fake because okay. he he's he's making this food and he knows how it's made and how it should be made, but he's making it this way and he feels so fake. But we are like, dude, it's good. It still tastes really good. Yeah. So, all right, let me let me try. Sorry, I think I, we still don't know what the imposter okay, syndrome is. Okay, I want to get back to that right yeah. now. Okay, so the imposter syndrome can be defined as a collection of feelings of inadequacy that persists despite evident success. Meaning, no matter wow. how good you've been at comedy, you still feel like, wow, um, yeah, y'all don't know, I'm just faking it. Yeah. So that is a that is imposter syndrome and it usually hits people that have hit a certain stage of their skill set because you suddenly realize, oh crap, I know all the gears to this now. I yeah. know how the mechanics of a laugh work. I know how the mechanics of uh, a plate work. I, if I just do A plus B plus C, I'm gonna get D. And that is suddenly that realization of, oh crap, I know the formula. Now what? Yeah. I'm faking it. Am I faking it? Am I not faking it? So like, I'm gonna just read off. Hey, just so you guys know, I'm not like reading off random articles of the net. This is a Harvard Business Review, okay? Um, imposters suffer from a chronic self-doubt and a sense of intellectual fraudulence Ooh. that overrides any feelings of success or external proof of their competence. So this is rough, especially in the creative field because we will view like maybe a piece of art or a video like amazing, but the guy who made it, doesn't feel like it's amazing at all because they're like, you know, I cheated. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I know how it's made. Which I should is, done that. Which is basically every creative ever. La. Mm. Right? Basically that. <laughs> they seem to be unable to internalize their accomplishments, however successful they are in the field. Yeah. High achieving, 
highly successful people often suffer. So, imposter syndrome does not equate itself with low self-esteem or lack of self-confidence. In fact, researchers have linked it with perfectionism. Oh, come on. Oh, Okay, I mean, gosh. just want to clear the air. It's not... Sim- we we're not we're not perfect. We I don't. Might I mean, li- listen, listening to this, <laughs> listening to this, right. I don't even think I have imposter syndrome. Okay, so um, let's let's go through a small checklist. You need to have the success. Right, we're not as success. You see, no, but even that, like yeah. to us, it doesn't feel like success. Yeah, but to everyone else, it's like wow, you guys are living the dream. You guys made it. Okay, career, okay, yeah, okay. If, if 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 we're talking about success. Being subjective. We've also been invited then, yes, to okay. Netflix, Marvel. Okay, yes. Mad Celebrity. Okay, so okay, you yes, start there is, Okay, we but have see, had- We don't think about that we right don't, the bat. Not at all. Okay, some common thoughts and feelings, okay? Uh, just to go through the jadedness. I must not fail. That's one, definitely. I feel like a fake. Um, I feel like because I felt like a fake, I'm so real now. Okay, it's all down to luck. Okay, no, they don't believe in that. Okay, I mean, it's all down to chance. I'm not sure about Right place, right time. Maybe. Okay, success is no big deal. Yeah, what is success? Yeah, you see? Okay, there we go. I think think you literally fit imposter syndrome right now. Okay, cool guys. So basically, I think a lot of the jadedness that comes from the thing is because like, I think we figured out how social media works. We figured out how making comedy videos work. And it's like, okay, are we still going to do this? (laughs) And I think after a while, it just got like, uh, tiring, yeah. which, which is the second element of it. Um, yeah. No one really addresses burnout in, in our field uh, properly. I think everyone just expects you to show up to work the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And I don't know, when's the next time, when, when was the last time you've had a talk about burnout with someone else who is not from this team or like from the circle? I mean, you, you talked to a lot of agency Actually, people. no, okay. I mean, to be fair, I think I have a really good, group of friends. So right. like besides our local friends, we've mm. talked to our good friends who are creators and artists in Singapore as right, well. Right. And, and everyone similarly facing made of the same things. So right. I wouldn't say it was that long ago, but uh, that being said, I think this, <laughs> just a, a fun fact, this year has been the year that I've had so much white hair. I've actually noticed that. Yeah. Uh, like even my hairdresser, even our hairdresser was like, whoa, me, you, you have a lot of white hair yeah. this year. And I'm the uh, one with a kid. Yeah. So um, the internalized so, stress. So that's, that's, you know, <laughs> hey, that's, that's life. And I, I don't want to have a head full of white hair. I don't mind it. I think it looks cool, Is but it not yet, man. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to shift it to right. talk about more about what Ming Han's doing right now, because yeah. I feel like, I'll chair this this part because I have to ask him the questions. Yeah. He can't answer the questions. But, but it's all part of it. Like I think it's every, all part everything of it. we talked yeah. about leads up to this as well. So I think everything that Mingan's mentioned has uh mm-hmm. has kind of segued into what I would call reinventing yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and after a s- many seasons of doing something that he has struggled with uh creatively and internally because it's not what he wants to make. Uh, every time he wants to try to kind of like make something new, a request comes in to do something old. Mm. And what that does, it, it stunts the growth and it stunts the momentum to, to make something new. Yeah. And so recently in this past, maybe a uh, month or so, um, the managed, I, I guess the the, 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 the the OG team, me, Brian and Minghan, we sat down and we talked about it and, and the decision was made for Minghan to kind of be like, you know what, I'm just going to go and do what mm. I was going to do. Right, and he yeah. was like, "I'm going to shift. It's it's going to be a big sh- different. It's it's definitely not something what people expect on the channel. Yeah, uh, how many years in? Um, but he said, you know what? I'm just going to do it for the channel, for the content, and also for my sanity. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the thing about playgrounds is like, uh, it's not a commitment. It's not a contract that kids sign up with. You go and play when you want to play. There are other kids sharing the playground, and that's essentially what we did. We mm. made videos when we felt like we want to make videos." we kind of just invited new writers, new directors, but I don't think people see that. Yeah. So they just saw that, oh, the videos are changing. I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> they are new writers. They're, it's not always just me. Correct. Um, but I think we really stuck to our guns and said like, you know what? If we've really treated this like a playground, we're going to keep treating it like a playground. And um, we literally went against the whole tide of it. And like, instead of, you know, cranking out like two, what, two every, one every two weeks, uh, consistently stuck up the trends, did what, what was in trend. We just did whatever we wanted for seven years. Yep. And that's where we are today. Um, I mean, he's right. Um, one thing that we, I guess, slowly grew under our noses was the fact that 
we now have a big team and with the big team comes a lot of responsibilities of like, yo, what we're going to eat next month. Um, and because of that, mm. uh, every time, I mean, as compared to last time, a scenario last time would be like, hey, got an idea for this video, guys. Oh, cool. What is it? I'm going to write it here. I've written it. Let's go and shoot. And that is as seamless a process as it comes out. These days, it's more like, hey, I got an idea, guys. Oh, okay. But this job just came in. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got to do this job. Yeah, we got to do this job. All right. I guess we're doing this job. Fast forward two months, job finishes. Hey guys, remember that idea that I had uh, two months ago? How about, oh wait, Ming, there's another job that just came in. Oh, okay, cool. And that is basically what kind of put us all where we are today. It's not to say it's, it's not working out. The call is working out, it's fine. Yeah. Like the, the, the business is running. It's just that in terms of the freedom that we've got as YouTubers uh, in the past, yeah, that 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 didn't that that's not the same anymore, I guess. And that's why we sat down the other day, we talked about it. I said, yo guys, I kinda want to reconnect with our audience again. I wanna use the channel and stretch back my hands uh to the people who really build it with me, which are you guys or the people are tuning in. And I said, Hey, I owe them this. I think we owe them this. Mm. We gotta find who TMT is to us today. Mm. And I think that's some I think like Oh, it just comes full cycle because I think the channel started with me vlogging yeah. and now I'm back vlogging again. Yeah. And I feel that it's going to give everyone that breathing space to at least like, okay, don't worry about this first. And where are we all now? We all sat down, we asked each other like, where are you creatively? When is the last time we just sat down and wrote for fun? Yeah. What makes us laugh now? And yeah, that's essentially the heart behind the change today. Yeah, I think when it comes to making such a it, it's it's a pretty 180 if you think about it. Like you, you've everything so far has been kind of um, through a storyline, or you know mm. we've always played characters in this in, in, in the videos on TMT, and mm. now to take it in a full sort of different direction, um, being Ming Han being Ming Han, you know, mm. uh, being the vlogs again. I mean, you could see hints of it mm. um, last year and this year mm. with the YouTube Creators for Change video. Yeah. Even the Father's Day video we did this year. Yeah. That was the first time we've kind of did stuff that was, I'm speaking not as a character, I'm speaking as Ming Han, speaking you as, as our yeah. dad. Yeah. And I think the, the, that's something that ideally, that's also where we want to go to. Mm. Uh, it's the kind of content we do want to make. It's not that we are only, I, maybe that's the duality of it. Like we both love making stories. We mm. love creating worlds for a short film or a mm. series and that's something we, we really enjoy doing mm -hmm. but at the same time we also like being ourselves yeah um and, and and highlighting the people around us because we're so ordinary and the extraordinary lives and stories that we have around us uh inspire us to make a lot of i guess sort of like uh, follow them i think to check out what they're wow, doing i think that's something good you just said right there we like being ourselves yeah i think this season of content is like we're trying to figure out who we are now Mm. I think we've not done that for a very long time because we've just been focused on working, yeah. making it work, making it work. And I think, it, and then don't get me wrong, it's been fun. It's been fun to see where your skills can grow. So there's a very, there was a very huge focus on the technical side of things, yeah. uh, building new teams, building people, uh, seeing how far we can push production. Yeah, so now we've got that and we found out, I literally was messaging Roy there, like last night, we found out ourselves at a very funny place. Last time we had like zero skills, all the hard videos work. Now our skills are there, but the hard, like what, what has happened to it? Mm, mm. And I feel like, okay, uh, if this is not urgent uh, to anyone else, it's urgent to me. Yeah. And I feel that no one actually makes a business decision based on where is your heart now. Yeah. It's very rare. You usually make decisions based on like, oh crap, next quarter, where's, where's the finance gonna flow? Yeah. Uh, just so you guys know, this is not something we took lightly at a whim and fancy. It's almost as if this, this restaurant has been serving you Japanese food for seven years and now they're changing to Western food. It's a bit crazy. It's, uh, I would say it's almost self-destructive at it some is, point. Yeah. And I acknowledge that, but I think I acknowledge the fact that I think number one, our, all our mental health is more important and where we are as creators, uh, if we wanted to stay true to the craft, this is this is one of the trials I think a creator goes through. Mm. Can you abandon what the audience thinks or what you think the audience wants yep. and do what 
you need to do at this point. Yeah, which is which which is I think a point I want to make on the on, on the bigger scale for everyone who's listening to the podcast. Mm. In case you were like, oh, that's nice, Mingan, but how do I do that in my own context? Oh boy. Um, I think that the the word or the mm. phrase that I had kind of like going to this was that there is a need for you to reinvent yourselves. But I think sometimes when people say that, they think of, oh, I got to change my wardrobe. I got to be from an introvert. I need to be an extrovert. Okay. And I think, yeah, I mean, you see that in the in, in the movies, right? Like the Princess Diaries, how um, Anne Hathaway was this kind of like nerd in school and then she became a jaw-dropping princess, right? Like to some people, that's that's what reinventing yourself means. Yeah. It's that montage of quick shots in the, mm. in, 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 in the, in the shop where you try different dresses and the then you come out. Yeah, it's, it's the makeover montage, right? right. Um, and, I, and I think as much as that can be true, I feel like sometimes reinventing yourself is just taking stock and asking yourself, who am I now? Since the last time I realized mm. who I was, you know? It's literally just being like, okay, I've been this person for so long. Am I still really that person? And it's and the answer is more often than not, no. Mm. Because I think we're all, as humans, we're constantly evolving, we're constantly growing, mm. and we're changing every day of our lives because of the external and internal factors around us. Yeah. So like your family, your relationships, your, um, your workplace, and even where you are, the stresses that have, uh, that life puts upon you, changes you. And that's why I feel like there is a need to, I'm going to, change the phrase reinvent it's just check yourself man yeah. it's just like well, who are you at this juncture of your life and yeah. is this some is that is that are there changes that need to be made um for example um do you need to like me work out a little bit more right do right you, now you? i do i do <laughs> and i'm i was meant to but two weeks ago i busted my left ankle and it's still not healed excuses you see excuses, excuses. right because but no but that's 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 checking yourself that's right. reinventing yourself because what you need at this point of time isn't what you need two years ago yeah uh, and and that's what essentially ming han did with tmt I had, a, I had an automatic check though i had a kid yeah so i think when a major life milestone hits you on the head uh, you check yourself a lot. You and do. I felt that that was actually the beginning of a lot of self-improvement for myself. Mm. Because instead of like, I don't know, I remember it very clearly. I think it was the end of last year. Um, well, sorry, I think I know it's the end of last year. Um, so you had a kid? I had a kid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there was a sudden search to just improve. And instead of, I don't know, instead of taking like quote unquote uh, paternal uh, maternity leave, a paternity leave, I think I just kind of amped it up because there was like new purpose to improve. I think before this, we were all really making videos for ourselves. Mm. Like, okay, this might sustain me. This might give me a check next month. But now suddenly for me, it's like, damn, I, I need to make this work because I need, I'm need i taking care of someone who cannot take care of herself. Yep. And to me, suddenly it gives so much more meaning to why I wanted to make videos. Um, but that had to be expressed first with the team. You, I, I, I think like, like when you say like, uh, as time goes on, some of the responsibilities that pile on you, uh, I think it happens without you knowing. And for us, it's a different circumstance because we've got to take care of like at least 10 other people. Well, like it's 15. a very big responsibility. <laughs> I mean, try, try paying allowance to 10 different kids and then times that allowance by like maybe 50 or something like that. Um, and I think I just wanted to make sure that even though I made this change on, on TMT, that there, the team had a place to go, the team still had a place to, to find livelihood and the team had a place to still expand their skill set. This is actually not the first time we talked about this. I think a year back or even two years back, the thought of like, yo, we got to do something else actually started to come to mind. But um, at that time, it was more of a worry that, yo, a lot of people join us to make short films. Yeah. We kind of made some sort of name that we, they want to see a TMT short film come to life. They want to be a part of that. What are we, what are they going to feel if suddenly like, I'm sorry guys, I'm going to stop this. Yeah. And I think that's, that's actually super, it, it made me feel very cornered because like I knew where my creative sense wanted to go, but responsibility and expectations kind of keep you in place. Mm. And wow, it was that tough because I think you guys can see it. Like, I think once a year or twice a year, I just put like one or two things out that I really feel good about. Yep. But the rest of the time, uh, I'll be honest, I think we're just writing because we know we got to put a video out and then yep. you can feel it, I can feel it. 
And it's more of just me being honest about it. I'm like, yo, I needed to make something else. And that's why I kind of picked up the camera and started shooting photographs. Mm. Uh, I started vlogging with my family. And I'm like, yo, I think vlogging, vlogging is, is coming back. Like, I, I like it. I think Mayu started writing music. I started writing music. Uh, so it hints about what's coming up next year, maybe. Yep. Um, we all grow as creatives. And I think, I think in terms of quote unquote reinventing yourself, I wouldn't say it's too much of reinventing. You just got to acknowledge that the next stage of your growth requires new ingredients. Yep. Like you got to add something new to the mix. Like if you keep on doing the same thing, you're going to get the same thing. Yep. And, and that's where I guess this decision of like, okay, should we, should we overhaul the channel? Should we stop short films? And I'm like, you know what? That's, there's this safety net of like, no, maybe the next one will work. Maybe the next one will be okay. And I'll be all myself. Like, I think when you put a limit on creativity, it, it, it's a catalyst. And I, my limit was no more. Mm. Not now. If you want to make it, make them next year. Mm. And then I realized that like, immediately the inside of my, at least my creative, uh, my creative mind was like, okay, crap, good. That means number one, I know I can rest from this properly. And number two, oh, I, I really want to make it. Sunny, there's that small feeling like, crap, no, no, I really want to make shots. And the discipline is like, no, stick to it. That's your reflex telling you, you want to make shots. You got to do vlogs now. You got to do simple content now. You got to get back to the heart of why are you making YouTube videos and why you want to talk to your to your audience and where we now as, I think as people. Mm. Because the vlogs enable us to do that. The vlogs enable us to just tell daily stories we don't need to pretend to be anything we're not. Um, you guys literally can see us take B-rolls of chicken rice and literally just walk around the office for no, no apparent reason. But that's, I don't know, we're just two episodes in at the time of recording. Yeah. So that's as much as I can say for it for now. Um, I think yeah. maybe the next question to ask ourselves before we end the podcast is what's next for TMT? Wow. What is next for TMT? Um, we're not abandoning shorts and <laughs> sketches. <laughs> I think a lot of people thought we we're going to delete the channel or something yeah. like that. Good Lord. I mean, no, no, we're the not. The kind of stories that, that Desmond and Adele and Caleb were putting out. I mean, just so you know that creativity is live and li alive and well in the studio. I just told the guys, yo, can you share the, the trailer and just be dramatic about it? Yeah, then everyone started to try and go for an Oscar award. <laughs> Will I have a yeah. job next week? I think. <laughs> um, no, no. I mean, we, 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 we're still going to make short films. We're still going to make sketches. Yeah. It's who we are. I think storytellers at heart at the end of the day. But right now, <coughs> um, we're going to just kind of sit on yeah. on this new journey for a bit. I, I was, I am writing one of the vlogs to tell this story, but I can end it with this story. Um, I always picture where I was, where we are as a studio and telling stories like, an adventurer leaving, leaving a village. Mm. When an adventure, adventurer leaves a village, he never leaves for one day and comes back with a story. Yeah. An adventurer goes for years or months. He goes up hills, fights monsters, goes through valleys and deserts. And he returns to the village like what? When a few years later, with a huge, a huge satchel of new stories and adventures. Mm. Can you imagine how that adventurer would feel like with today's requirements on him? Mm. He has to go out every day and come back with one new story every day at night, tell the village, go out again, come back at night, tell the village. I think that guy would die really yeah. fast. And I think that's where we are as quote unquote content adventurers. Now we got to set out on an adventure again. We got to go and collect new stories and get new skills and slay new dragons, literally internally and externally. And that's where we are. I think the good stories came the first few years because we had 20 years of stories to tell. Yeah. And that's where the good stuff comes from. Uh, now we got we to gotta set out on some other journey again and come back to the village when we're done instead of like expecting to come back every other week with a new story. Like, dude, it's not that realistic. Lah. Not yeah. that realistic. That being said, we might have something for Christmas. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, who knows? Again, we're not giving it up. We're not giving it up. Realistically, no, next year will be a very different year for TMT. <laughs> well, um, I think now that, that we've kind of opened the door for different sort of um, content and genres for the channel, we're actually also not forgetting to focus on, I guess just we're, we want to come back and do writing for sketches. Um, Ming and I have not done it for so long that mm. we feel, we both feel like, you know, if we're going to do it, let's do it properly. Mm. But who knows when that'll happen. Well, no, because sometime next year maybe. We gotta figure out what what is funny to us now. 
I, the worst lot of things aren't funny anymore. Nothing makes me laugh. It's really so. difficult. Send me memes, guys. Uh, that makes me laugh. Yeah, I know. What What do you guys think? Do you guys? Uh, I think. I think we want to ask you guys. Are you guys in a place where you felt you feel like you got to change, but you can't? Yeah. Um, and the only encouragement that we can give you guys is, hey, if not now, uh, <laughs> when? then when? Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. It's a great one, but yeah, I think for everyone who's who feels like they're stagnant, mm. that they're stuck. In, in, in a certain part of life, um, don't abandon it, not yet. Mm-mm. Keep on going at it. And um, if you feel that there needs to be change, make the small changes. Yeah. I think small changes always amount to big results. So um, have a great week ahead, guys. Hope this podcast was mm-hmm. insightful to you guys, for everyone who's interested to find out more about what happens behind the scenes for mm-hmm. DMT and Takeaway. Don't worry, we ain't going anywhere. Uh, maybe the next time we'll talk about, talk about what Takeaway is going through as well. Yeah, why <laughs> yeah. not? Um, until next time, this has been Ming Ming on mm. Table Talk. I don't know what that is. See you guys next time. Bye bye.